Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Ella or LIV and I'm back with a new video and I'm back with a new story time. Okay, so this story time is a little fresh. It just happened. So I might have very raw emotional, you know, kinny when I'm talking. Just FYI. Obviously, like the title says, I'm never going to date a Taurus again. I will never date a Taurus man ever again. I've had three emotionally traumatizing experiences with Taurus men. So y'all know that in like the last, I mean from like March to like June, I wasn't working or whatever. And I was just home, you know, I was on hinge cause I was, I was bored, I didn't have shit to do. So I was on hinge, you know, just matching with guys, talking, some would lead to date, some wouldn't. So I matched with this kid, we're gonna call him David, okay? So David and I, we started talking. The conversation started out really slow, you know, very organic like Nini would say um and you know it was like building up we started talking about more stuff about ourselves i had a birthday coming up you know i was getting a tattoo for my first tattoo so like we had like stuff i was just talking about and he we were really hitting it off and, like after a few days he asked for my phone number or whatever i gave it to him and you know he showed me his tattoo he was trying to walk me through like it's okay the tattoo will be painless like it won't be that bad da -da -da -da. We were vibing, okay? We were hitting it off very well. And I was like, oh, okay, like, this this feels nice. It's like a weekend. Then he asked me out on a date, obviously. Um, he wanted us to go. Actually, he asked me on a date. Um, he picked a restaurant. I didn't like that restaurant. I picked a restaurant. He didn't like that restaurant. And I was like, I don't think we should go out to eat then because we can't seem to agree on the restaurant to eat at. And he was like, okay, let's go make, let's go candle making. And I was like, okay, that's interesting. I've never done that before. And it'll be an interesting experience. I was like, sure, let's do that. So he sent me the address of the place and we're supposed to go candle making like a few days later. I went on the first day, we made the candles. I was nervous, but I, I was masking my nervousness with like confidence. So we're making the candles. I actually asked him, can I get two? And he was, and I was like, I mean, it was one pain. <laughs> I was like, can I get, can I make two candles? And he was like, sure. So, made the candles, it was very cute, and then we had to wait for the candles to cool down, obviously, like for the wax. So he was like, do you want to go grab something to eat as we're waiting? And I was like, yeah, sure, that sounds, yeah, that sounds good. So I went to the first restaurant, it was too full, went to, then I, I suggested another restaurant, this is the one he suggested was full, and then we ended up going there. It was cute, we're at the bar, we're eating, I didn't really eat, I think I ordered food, but I just, I was, I usually, I can't eat on dates, is he only me? Especially if it's someone that I'm just getting to know, like, I do know how to eat on dates. That thing is actually an issue. Um, and then, you know, I had, like, a few drinks. He had a few drinks. He became flushed. Like, he started turning red, and that shit was hilarious. I was just laughing at him the entire time. It was a really cute first day. I'm never going to laugh. I was like, okay, like, I would be open to seeing this man again. Like, I, let me know about you. I would like to see this man again, if he wants to see me again. So then he went back to get, get the candles, and then, you know, I went took me to my car, walked me to my car, I thought I was sweet. And another thing, like when we were going on like the date, like, cause we had to go from the candle place to the restaurant, so obviously we just took one car. So he drove, and like he opened the passenger door for me as we were going, which I thought was, you know, fine. But then like, when we, when we got there, like he came and opened the door for me again. He came and opened the door for me again, and I was just like, Oh, I've never experienced this, like, opening the door every single time. We came out from eating, he opened the door, I, we got to the candle place, he opened it. I was like, okay, that was so sweet. Like, I don't know, maybe I've just been dating assholes before. But, like, I haven't experienced someone opening the door every single time, like, both entering and leaving. Like, I was like, okay, this feels good. I was like, okay, gentlemen. Anyways, I went back home, he went back. I think he had to go to work that day. It was so odd. Um, and then, you know, we're texting or whatever. My friend was asking me, like, how did it go, how did it go, do you think you will see him again? And I was, honestly, I didn't really know, like, I couldn't really get his vibe. Like, when we're eating and he got flushed, like, when we're drinking, that was, like, a cute little moment. But, like, overall, for the date, I couldn't really, like, get if it was that great that he would want to see me again. You know what I'm saying? Like, sometimes I've had dates, like, the guy's, like, planning the next date during our first date. But it didn't, it was, it was just very chill. So I really didn't know how it would go. He obviously asked me out again. I expected to go eat this time, pick the place that was closer to me so I didn't have to drive to the city. And, you know, we went out to eat. We, we honestly went out to drink. 
That was a Friday. I was like, shit, I'm gonna be drinking on someone else's dime. I'm gonna drink, okay? So I wear my burritas, we had shots, went to this Mexican place, and you know, we're in the booth, and then he ended up coming to sit beside me. Um, and I was like, okay, okay, you know, I didn't feel like, ugh, go away. So we're talking, we're just chatting or whatever. But then by then, I've I've noticed two things. He doesn't like to call. He was like a texter. Oh, I forgot the second thing. But I, know I called him out on it on the second day. And he was like, oh, he'll do better. He'll work on it. And after dinner, we went to went bowling. Listen, when this man and I were in the beginning, it was sweet. Went bowling, I went to his car, and then we made out. And then, you know, I was like, okay, this is, this is cute. Like, I like this. And then he wanted to see me again. And listen, I was unemployed. So, baby, I had all the time in the motherfucking world like you want to want to hang out let's go where you want to go and i don't have to pay shit what let's go it was cute it was cute i liked it um sometimes like even after work like he would want to see me like it felt nice like somebody was just you know wanting to be with me all the time you know we talk about books he liked to read i have never seen a man that liked to read i'm sorry and then one time i was in his car and we're listening to music and my music taste and this man's music taste is like 80 percent compatible oh like do you know how hard it is to find a guy that listens to black a guy that listens to ari lennox a guy that listens to um sabrina claudio sabrina claudio and actually have her songs saved on his playlist like ain't no gimmicks I saw bro this is my husband what are you talking about this is my husband I have married him in my head like hello this is my man the first two three weeks I miss balls okay so he had two trips planned coming he was supposed to go to the Caribbean and then he was supposed to go to the West Coast for his birthday because now we're in April Mm. He went for the first trip. He was gone for like three or four days. I miss this man. I miss this man like I was missing my left rib, bro. Like, I felt so lonely, like, because he had my time. Okay, that one used to text me 24-7. And that's the unemployed girl. That's what the fuck I need. You get me? So, you know, and then when he went to the Caribbean, he went to like the countryside. So, like, his service wasn't that great. So, we couldn't talk as often as we used to talk. Oh, my God. When this man came back. And he came to see me i ran i had like a cinderella moment i ran and jumped on this man like i hadn't seen him in like six years now that i'm talking about it it probably was too much you know but then he will always like tell me things like you know i really like you like he would just say so random and that's my love language like i like words baby tell me how much you love me tell me how much you like me that should make me feel good Ugh! Anyways, like when I jumped on him and like we hugged and we kissed, it was like, oh my god, like I feel like my husband had traveled to war and come back and I was, you know, so happy to see him or whatever. Anyway, it was cute. And then we would just hang out. He would come, he would be at my house for hours and he would have work the next day. Like we would just be talking and just watching TV and making out, honestly. And because I liked him so much, I was like, okay, I'm gonna hold out on the cookie. Like I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna, I'm gonna hold out. I'm gonna hold out as much as I can because I. I was beginning to really, really like this man. Like, really, really like him. So then, the second trip, yeah, right? He had to go to the West Coast. So he was supposed to be gone for like, I don't know, five days or something. I don't know. Everything just started to do like this, like this, like this, like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, it was just not. I mean, I understood when he went to the Caribbean in the countries and he had no service, but now he have service. But it was his birth, it was his birthday, right? So I can't take it too personal. Like this man is celebrating his birthday with his friends. Obviously, he's gonna be busy. But he always checked in on me, like morning and nighttime, like you know, just checking in, making sure I'm good or whatever. But I missed him. It's like five days. So he came back, and I was like, okay, I want to do a little picnic for you for your birthday. Like you know, I want to do something for you. And he was like, oh my god, that's so sweet. So I was like, you know, let me know like your schedule and everything. His job was like weird. He had like very weird hours and like his schedule was always all over the place. So I was like, you know, let me know when you're free and then we can do something. Like when he first came back from the trip from the Caribbean, like he saw me the day after he got back, right? Now we have, he's been back from the West Coast for like four days and you ain't made plans to see me. You ain't pl made plans to want to see me. So like... 
my intuition is like, whoo, you know what I'm saying? And one day he texted me, he was like, why your phone always on do not disturb? And I was like, I'm, I'm home all the time, I'm on my phone a lot, so like, I like to put on do not disturb so I can just take a break from my phone. But, if I'm being totally honest with you, I was still on my phone regardless. So the do not disturb was just for decoration, if I'm being totally frank. But I just wanted it to be there, like, it was like a mental shenanigans for me but i would always reply his text on time it wasn't like i was two hours in him or three hours in him. like i would text him very frequently back so that was just like i thought it was just like a question and then like went past and then one time like this is like day five of him coming back from his trip and this man has not made interest in me like i'll let you know i'll let you know so like i'm like oh my god the gig is up like i just knew and it's so funny because before this man would, like it felt so good to be true and he would be like i really like you ella and i'm like bro don't hurt me because this shit feels good and i feel like if you hurt me it's gonna hurt really bad and he was like i'm not gonna hurt you i'm not like your other boys you know, I'm not gonna hurt you, like, I'm serious, like, I really wanna get to know you, you know, and see where this goes, da 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 Say everything that I wanted him to hear. Why am I fucking emotional? Jesus. I told you guys this shit was still wrong. Anyways. Oh no. Oh no. Get yourself together, bitch. Jesus. Jesus. I'm actually about to cry. Who? Okay. So then I was just like, you know, what's happening? So I started feeling really sad. And then coupled with that, like the depression was eating me from the inside, right? And this man was like a distraction for me. So I was like, rah, he's pulling away. Like I started freaking out and I was just going through the emotional upside down. One day, like I was like, can you just call me? Cause he, this man did not like to call. He liked to text. Like, I have to always ask him to call me on FaceTime or call me on the phone, like, and I like to, I'm a talker, I don't, texting, there's only so much you can talk about. So, but in the beginning, like, because he saw me so often, it kind of made up for him not calling. But now, it's like, I'm not seeing you, you're not calling me, you're texting me very frequently, but who the fuck is texting? So when I was like, can you just call me? And then he called and I was just very emotional. I was just like crying on the phone. He was like, are you okay? I'm like, I don't really know. Like, I just feel very weird. I just feel, I don't feel like myself, da, 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 da. And then after the phone call, he got to work. Cause I was like on the phone with him on his way to work, on his drive to work, got to work. I hear from this man for like six, seven hours. I was like, rah, I've scared him. <laughs> oh my God, I have scared him away. So, I text him, and I'm like, you know, how's work going, da 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 So I was texting him back, yeah, he's fine. I was like, I just asked him, like, did I scare you this morning, like, just calling you and, you know, crying on the phone, like, was that scary for you? And he was like, nah, 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 I'm good, I'm cool, I'm cool. I was like, okay. But y'all, like, when I tell you the energy in the relationship just flatlined so bad, like, I could feel it. So bear in mind, all this time, me and him both still have our Hinge account. We're both still matched on Hinge, right? And then one day I go to my Hinge. Because now I'm, I'm dating this man for like, what? It's been four or five weeks now. I'm not really on Hinge like that. So I go on Hinge just to see what's going on, you know? And I see that he has unmatched me. I was like, okay, so something is wrong, right? Something is off. And I was right. So I sent him this voicemail like, I just saw that y'all matched me on Hinge, like, clearly something is going on, you want to take, you know, talk to other people, or I don't, I don't really know. Because, let me tell you why I know he unmatched me, okay? He unmatched me, I made a new Hinge account with my friend's phone number, or my cousin's phone number, and found that he was still on Hinge, but he had just unmatched me, because it could have been he deleted his account. But like I went, to, I made a new, I made an account and got to find out. I know I sound fucking crazy, but I made an account to go and find out. And I saw his, you know, his account. I just, Hinge, you can really like filter with preferences, like race, age or whatever. So like it was easy to find him. So he was still on Hinge. So I sent him a voice, I was voice and I was like, clearly like you want to, you know, you are matching on Hinge. You want to keep talking to other people. I didn't think you were in the place right now that you know we would want to talk to other people still but clearly you are so i'm just you know 
take myself out of this equation because I don't have time for like, you know, the games or whatever. This man did not respond to me. I was legit on the verge of tears on that voice note. This man just did not reply to me. For like two days, nothing. Someone used to text me every day. It just zilch. Zero. I was like, okay. So I messaged him like two days later. I'm like, you couldn't just dignify me with a response? Like, even if you want to end things, like, you couldn't just dignify my message with a response? And he was like, listen, I don't think me and you are going to work, okay? Clearly, um, you don't like my schedule. I'm, I'm telling you I'm busy and I feel like you think I'm lying about my schedule. I, I don't want a girl, I don't want a girl that doesn't, is not understanding of like the fact that I work very hard and I work a lot. What? And he was like, also, your phone stays on do not disturb and you, you keep ignoring my message. What? I was like, huh? I was like, listen, if it's the schedule thing, the only reason I kept asking was because I wanted to plan a picnic for your birthday. Okay? I have to I have to, you know, prepare to, for the picnic for your birthday. So I gotta know when it's gonna happen. That's why I needed to know your schedule. And then for the do not disturb thing, huh? What are you talking about? Like, I told you why I put my phone on do not disturb. But my do not disturb has never affected me responding to your messages. So what the fuck are you talking about right now? Anyways, this man keeps going back and forth. I'm thinking, you know, you know, he's done, right? He said it won't work. So I'm like, okay. But he keeps asking me, like, how are you? Um, did you eat? But I'm like, what is this? I was like, so let me get this straight. You want to keep talking to me still? He was like, yes. I was already inside. I couldn't, because I should have, honestly, I should have left at that moment. I should have just dropped him. But I was too deep. My feelings were invested. Even though it was like week six, I was just invested. I was like, okay. So, literally, starts talking to me like everything's normal. After that fucking two day hiatus, nah, and the answers. Next day, I was like, okay, so what's that about? Like, you were not going to text me back ever? He was like, no, I wasn't. I was like, so you think ghosting me is like, after everything, you and I have like experienced, you just wanted to ghost me. He was like, but you gotta realize the reason why I did though. <laughs> oh, I'm a fool. I was like, well, I just have to agree to disagree because your reasoning is that my phone is always on do not disturb. And that bothers you. But I'm not going to take my phone off of Do Not Disturb because of a man. Like, that, that I'm, I'm going to look crazy. Like, you're not my man to be telling me not to put my phone on what I want to put my phone on. I, like, that would have just been too much for me. Like, I'm not. Anyways, he's talking. We're talking. This is like a week and a half now that he's been back from his trip. No plans to see me or whatever. Like, three days after, you know, we start talking again. We're talking. And then he's like, your phone is still on do not disturb and i'm like bro bro you can't be serious like i think i just couldn't take it seriously that he was that bothered and let me tell you something i know that there are people whose phones are on do not disturb that when you call them you know it goes to voicemail first my phone's not set up like that if you call me the first time it's gonna ring my dnd is different my work is different all my different focus levels these are for people who own iphone sorry all my different focus levels have different settings like for work i don't get no calls no text nothing because i'm at work i mean when i used to have a job obviously and then sleep also my sleep mode no text no calls no nothing so but my do not disturb like regular dnd and focus mode i can get calls so i was just like are you serious he was like I already told you that this bothered me twice now. Clearly, you don't listen. I was like, okay, I can do a compromise. So on my DND, I took his name off. So he didn't see that thing anymore. And he was like, oh, thank you. So then we're chatting. He's like, okay, I want to see you. When I'm like, when can I see you? I was like, okay, finally. I was like, um, you know, 
we can figure something out because now i don't want to say next weekend or tomorrow before you say i'm pushing i don't understand your schedule so i'm like you know we'll figure something out he's like okay he's like i miss you da, 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 da. i'm like okay i miss you too but at this point like it's just seeming so fake and just pretentious and i was like okay i guess i miss you too you know whatever so the thing is 10 o'clock my phone switches from dnd to sleep mode so my phone switches to sleep mode and i guess he could see the do not disturb this notification <laughs> and he was like yo listen i can't do this with you we're just gonna have to stop talking you are stubborn and there are just too many red flags that i don't want in you know someone that i want to be with i was like huh you just told me you missed me like 30 minutes ago what are you talking about i was like what he's like yeah like i can't do this I was so confused. I was so confused. I started calling this man's phone. I started calling. He texted me. Don't fucking call me. Stop fucking calling me. What? So I'm blowing this man's phone up like, if you're going to break up with me, if you're going to end things with me, give me the, um, dignify me with uh, explanation, okay? I was like, David, just answer the fucking phone. Let's talk about it. Like, I need to understand what's going on. Like, it's okay if you want to end things with me, but at least let me understand what's happening. He was like, what don't you understand? You're stubborn. I told you time and time again about your do not disturb, and you still put, my, put me on do not disturb. You clearly don't listen. That I, I was like, are you fucking serious? This is the reason that you want to end things? He was like, yes, that's the red flag. Da, 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 da. And I'm just like, they could just answer the phone. Let's talk about it. He blocked me. My text message went from blue to green. I started to wail. I was crying because it was so confusing. I have bad anxiety. You can't just leave me hanging like that. My whole chest will be feeling tight. I was like, what's the actual fuck, bruv? You know what I'm saying? And so funny because the day before I had just learned this technique of how you can like put start something 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 I forgot it now, but and someone's number and it will call them with a block number with your block number so like even though they block you your call will still go through. I had just learned that the day before how God worked. So I used that and I called his number and then he found he was like, "Stop fucking calling me, yo! Like dead ass. This is harassment. I could press charges." So he works in the law enforcement department. So that threat was so heavy for me. Like, you're threatening to press charges because you can. Because I'm calling your phone. I didn't even pull up to you. I had no slash or tire. I didn't do anything. I was calling you. I was like, stop fucking calling me. I was like, okay. Talk, just calm down. What's going on? He's like, what do you want me to say? You don't listen. I told you over and over again, stop putting me on do not disturb. And you just don't fucking listen. I was like, is that the reason that you're talking to me like this? Like, it has to be something else. There has to be something else. Are you seeing someone else? Like, because don't put this shit on do not disturb. That don't make no fucking sense. He was like, I don't know what to tell you. We're not working out. We haven't been talking that long. You'll be okay. I told you not to hurt me and then you do this? I'm already emotionally unstable enough. You want to add to this nonsense. And he just ended the call. I remember I just took a Xanax and I went to bed. It didn't even hit me till the next day. Why do situation breakups be like hurting so bad? Anyways, this man, after blocking me, and all of that extraness that Friday had the audacity to text me the next week and be like, I just need to, I just need, I just need you to answer one question. Why didn't you respect me? Are you mad? Are you okay? Is, is something wrong with you? For real? Are you alright? Because you sound like a, I was like, is this boy psycho? Maybe I dodged the bullet because 
you're moving so stupid. I don't understand. How do we get from do not disturb to me not respecting you? Are you fucking dumb? It took me like two days to gather myself to respond to him. But I was just like, you must have lost your motherfucking mind. Like, you really had me eating off the palm of your hand. Like, you could have used me to do anything you like. I was in it. My, I was blinded, infatuated. You did me like rubbish. And you have the audacity to talk to me about respect. Are you insane? That was it. We never spoke to each, each other again. The whole thing lasted a good like two months, but I'm done with y'all. Taurus men, the stubbornness, the lack of self-awareness, the way they think is their way or the highway, literally. But what people forget is the bull is strong, but I am a ram. I am an Aries. I'm stubborn too. No man in this world will tell me, take your phone off, do not. You're not paying my phone bill. You will not tell me what to do with my phone. Yeah, That sounds stupid. No, I'm not taking my phone off, do not disturb. Not for you, not for anybody. Not for you, not for anybody. That was it. It was very exhausting. This is the most exhausting, but the other two, this is like a 9 out of 10. The other two, one was like 7 and one was like 8, so they're very close to. But it's just always been this emotionally draining experience. And this last one, I'm just like, yeah, I'm done. This is a 28-year-old man. No, sir. I'm good. But, you know, I haven't given up on love. I will still find my true love. One day, one day. And in the meantime, I'm trying to love myself. That shit is hard as fuck. We should talk about it too in another video. That self-love thing, it is hard. So I just want to be drunk and outside sometimes, but you're supposed to sit in it. Sit in your sadness. And shut up. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. This was a very long story time, I'm sorry. But let me know what you think. Don't judge me too harshly. Don't insult me. I will insult you back. I know I was a little stupid, I was a little foolish, but you know, matters of the heart. After that experience, I can't even judge no bitch no more. Because emotions will have you acting real stupid. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. If you're new to my channel, please subscribe and all that cute shit. Like the video for engagement purposes. And I'll catch you guys in my next one. This was a very long story time. <laughs>